Welcome back. We have breaking news. Those U.S. those Canadian inflation numbers have just landed. Uh, the, it is a softer print than expected. Uh, Year-over-year inflation uh, in the month of January comes in at 2.9 percent, so below 3 percent. Economists had forecast 3.3 percent as the number, so it's a meaningfully lower number than economists had expected. Again, it comes in at 2.9 percent. That's down from 3.4 percent in December and lower than the estimate of 3.3 percent. The monthly number number shows uh, a flat inflation picture from uh, from December to January. There was no growth in inflation. 0.0% is the number. 0.4 was expected. Uh, on the uh, so-called core basis, uh, which is closely watched by the Bank of Canada, the number is also lower than expected. So that is the theme. Inflation in January comes in decidedly lower than expected. Uh, the core number, the, the core median number, as it is termed by the Bank of, uh, by the Bank of Canada, Canada, uh, or by StatsCan, I should say, comes in at 3.3%. 3.6% was expected by economists, and 3.6% was the number in December as well. So weaker than expected inflation during the month of uh, December. We're joined now by uh, Pedro Antunes. He's chief economist at the Conference Board of Canada for his takeaway. Pedro, thank you, as always, for joining us. A uh, uh, fairly dramatic print here. What do you think of these lower than expected inflation numbers? Well, that's certainly good news. I, I think it counters a little bit what we saw in the U.S., which was slightly disappointing because inflation ticked up a little bit there and uh, markets took a little bit of a hit from that. Uh, so in Canada, I think that's really a, a good news story. Certainly our central bank has been more hawkish, you know, much more prudent around their wording about when they're going to lower interest rates. I don't think this necessarily changes the uh, timing of that. I, th I think we're probably still going to see something uh, not before mid-year. Uh, in, in terms of uh, starting to see rates coming down. Uh, but this is great news. And, you know, uh, for those that are looking at, uh, you know, the band between 1% and 3%, uh, we hit that before. Once before, we got to 2.8%. Uh, we're there again. Between 1% and 3% is the, is, is the bank's target range. So uh, this is really great news, actually. So I just had a question, you know, with regards to Canadian inflation in particular, I mean, housing or, um, you know, shelter has been a, a large contributor to inflation because you see, you know, energy prices are down and, and food prices have been down. So, you know, to, to keep inflation lower, um, how do you view, you know, housing and, you know, with regards to the housing shortage in Canada and immigration, you know, coming in. So do you think we can get there to a level that is acceptable for, you know, the Bank of Canada to want to cut, you know, considering the, the shortages that we're experiencing with housing and, and the pressures there? Yeah, it's interesting now. There's a kind of a blame game going on around who's, uh, you know, to, uh, in, driving in inflationary pressures up. And, you know, in uh, the latest comments from the bank, we heard about, uh, you know, their concern about the very high levels of immigration. And I think we're seeing that playing out in, in rent prices. And in fact, if you look at kind of where the the uh, rents are hottest, it's in those provinces that have seen the strongest international and interprovincial migration. So certainly there's some sense there that uh, we're seeing uh, an impact from you know, what has been phenomenal levels of mostly non-permanent residents. So this is temporary foreign workers, refugees, and international students. And we haven't put the lid on those numbers yet. I know the government is looking to do so, but, uh, you know, there's there's still a lot of pressure there. Um, wh whether the Bank Canada will see, I, I think the bank is certainly uh, has seen this kind of playing out. They're not expecting, in, you know, inflation to come be below the 3% range through the first half of this year. And that's kind of in the, in the message we heard from them so I think we're still within you know kind of within that uh, you know that potential for a rate decline mid-year uh, assuming we continue to see progress on this but you're absolutely right I think in terms of rent and housing that is going to be uh, a continued source of pressure on inflation the biggest uh, contributor to the decline in headline inflation was lower prices of gasoline. That's not a surprise. That's been a, a trend for a while. But slowing grocery inflation was also a factor. Uh, are you uh, brave, brave enough to give us a forecast on where food price, where what's, what's going to happen to grocery inflation in months ahead? 
Well, uh, I mean, let's hope, you know, I've been kind of calling this wrong, I have to confess, because uh, we did see that big increase in commodity prices and agricultural product prices, uh, and that worked its way through the manufactured food, you know, like the agri-food supply chain, and it took a long time before we saw that fully impacting inflation, and then we were hopeful that as commodity prices started to come back off, that we'd see that deflationary impact. So hopefully this is a trend now that um. continues, I, I think for the most part, agricultural our prices have remained low. We saw a good year last year in Canada for ag production. Um, and so let's uh, let's hope that that continues to, to kind of uh, play itself out through that uh, that agri-food supply chain. But it's, uh, it, you know, an ongoing pain point for especially lower income households when we take a look at the components of inflation that are still very hot, and that is, you know, transportation. It's uh, despite the fact that we have uh, lower gas uh, gasoline prices this month, transportation continues to be a burden, rent and food. And those are uh, major uh, points of pressure for especially lower income households. So, you know, now that we've seen, you know, conflicting uh, CPI uh, prints between the U.S. and in Canada, I'm just wondering what your view would be with regards to who do you think will cut first? Uh, do, you still, do you think that Canada now has more ammunition to cut first, or do you think that they're still going to, you know, wait to see what the U.S. does and follow their path? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, I think it's really important, uh, you know, that how inflation plays out in the U.S. And we know the U.S. continues to have a fairly strong labor market, as do we, in fact, here in this country. Um, but, uh, you know, the inflationary pressures ticked up and they haven't really seen a slowdown in consumer spending south of the border. So that's been essentially, I think, the bigger concern. And what happens with U.S. inflation and U.S. rates is really important in terms of uh, the impact on uh, you know, essentially, uh, uh, mortgage, mortgage finance and, and mortgage and other financing costs here at home. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, you know, the U.S. US has a big influence. Uh, as to who cuts first, I, you know, I do think that Canada will probably be uh, more on the sidelines until we start to see rates coming down in the U.S. And of course, you remember, if uh, if rates come up in Canada ahead of those in the U.S., even if markets expect that to happen, that puts upward pressure on the Canadian dollar. And you know, that's uh, that. It's not a bad uh, uh, thing for, for, for inflationary pressures because that tends to lower uh, the price of imported goods. But I, I think the bank is going to be very reticent to increase to start to lower rates ahead of anybody else here, especially ahead of the U.S. 